So if we've connected successfully to MongoDB and verified that everything is working, we can start by creating models and a couple of requests which we'll be using. In our application, I will show you an example of app user management system. So we'll need two models. The first one with will be the app user and this will be then mapped to MongoDB collection and additionally the address which will be a nested JSON without the Mongo, uh, without the app user documents. So with that being said, let's create a new package. So let's click right, right mouse button, new package and call it model. Again, let's hit the right mouse button, new Kotlin class, and navigate down to the data class and specify the name. So I'll call it the app user. As the first thing, let's specify a couple of fields. The first one I would like to go with will be the identifier. This will be the nullable value. And by default, I will specify the null value to it so that I will not have to reference and explicitly set it each time I will create a new app user instance. We do that because later I will show you that we would like to have this value generated automatically. As the next one, let's go with some name. This will be the string value. Of course, every user has to have some email. So again, a string value and additionally the address and this will be the address type. We can see this is not imported, so right here. Once again, let's click on the model, new package and add, oh, sorry, not the package, new Kotlin class slash file and data class called address, correct? Right here, I would like to specify some street, string value, some city again of a string value and let's say some code which will be integer. Let's get back to the app user and now we have to add a couple of annotations so that later it will be persisted using data repositories. Of course, the first one is mapped entity which will mark our data class as a persistable type. Additionally, we have to point which one, which field, field is the identifier field and that we would like the value to be generated value. In Kotlin, we specify the target we, where we would like this annotation to be uh, put. So instead of the constructor, I would like this to be put on the field. Additionally, when it comes to the address, at this point, our application will not compile. So when I go right here, I'll have to annotate as serializable and deserializable. As we can see, this is this somehow is not imported by default. So what I can do now is Alt plus Enter and add the import. You can click with the mouse button or simply hit Enter. With that being done, let's add two requests which we would like to use later. The first one will be used to um, deserialize JSON provided by REST API clients into the data class instance. So again, I'll create a new package called request new data class and let's call it app user request. Interesting feature of IntelliJ is the possibility uh, to split the window and I'll split right the app user and the address. And I would like so that it will be easier to me to copy paste it right here. App user equal request should uh, not have the ID field, but should have the name, pass a string value, email string value. And when it comes to the address, I would like this structure to be flattened a bit. So again, uh, I will I will not provide a nested document here, a nested uh, structure here. We can simply duplicate the line with Ctrl plus D and rename email with street and city string 
and finally the code which should be integer type. This clay data class will be used uh, later. Mm, additionally, let's provide with one more uh, data class and this will be called search request. I will show you later how to search, for example, by uh, user email or name, we'll see. Uh, so let's add, for example, name and string value. That's all for this video and in the next one we will see how to implement our first endpoints.